and also thank my husband who is beside me. Uh, my testimony is way back in 2009, but I'll just give a brief before I came to Shalom Embassy. I was childless. I was having difficulties to bear children. Whenever I was pregnant, when it reached somewhere nine, um, four months, I would miscarry. I was laughed at. I was taught so many things. And the pressure was too much from my in-laws. And it was just too much. I was in the marriage for more than 10 years, precisely 12 years in marriage. And I had 10 miscarriages. I tried all so many churches. I even, because of wanting to have children and just stay in that marriage, I'd even resorted to go to a witch doctor, of which we, we tried that at the moment that we thought things would be okay. When we went back, the witch doctor was dead. Yeah. So now I've been to many churches. I would go through deliverance. They would give me water mixed with soda. I vomit, bubble gums, anointed bubble gums and all that. Until one day, my husband and I decided we part ways because it was too much. He was also under pressure and the shame was too much at work and everywhere. So we said we part ways. It was on a Saturday. He, pa he packed my clothes on Saturday night, uh, Friday night. Then Saturday following day, my aunt came home to visit us. Yeah, we had decided and I was also tired. My aunt came to visit her. She says, this capital hotel where I go to, there is um, Pastor Sande Sinyangwe. You try that place. Uh, he begged my husband, Apongozi, please, for the sake of, just try this place, and then you guys will separate. Me, I'd given up. I didn't even want to try any church because I've been to many churches. So my husband was convinced and said, no, let let us try this church. I came to Capitol Hotel. When I came into church, because my mind was already made up, I came into church, nothing was convincing. I had a book. I wrote every mistake that I found in that church at Capitol Hotel. And then I was looking for, I was looking for the pastor. At least let me just see the pastor. Maybe he will convince me. When I saw Apostle, I said, Ah, my own so we sat there, time came for, and that was 2009, it was in, in August. And then there was time for, before Miracle Service started, you would go to the pastor and then he would talk to you. So when it was my turn, he asked me, I explained to him what the problem was. And then he said, what scripture do you stand on? And I had no idea. I just said the word of God. Yeah, so uh, that's when he said, he, he gave me exodus, is it exodus? He says, none shall miscarry, none shall miscarry. And then he also said, children are a gift from God. Those are the scriptures you'll be standing on. Then we sat there, he started the miracle service, prayed with us. Yeah, I closed my eyes, I would see people fall, so I thought they were just paid. I, the moment that he started praying, I don't know how I found myself facing the west and my husband was facing the south at the entrance. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he prayed for us. He said, you shall not miscarry anymore. And then we continued coming. It was the next month in September. He, he called us from the audience. He says, Bring those two. And then we went to the altar. He started praying. He says, by this time next year, you shall hold your own baby. <laughs> by this time next year, you shall hold your own baby. If you do not believe, I will believe on your behalf. 
if you do not believe, I'll believe on your behalf. I, the, by this time next year, I carried that word, that prophetic word, but I slashed it in between. I carried the next year. I had my own calendar. So I made sure I had to, I had to conceive so that that next year, the prophecy will be confirmed. From there, because my motives were very selfish, I just wanted a baby and walk away from Shalom members. That pregnancy came out right there in church. So when I decided to say, I'll follow the Lord, I'll follow the Lord. I'm going to be in this ministry um, where it says, um, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. I grabbed that word. I said, I don't want children anymore. I think God wants me to, to just be like this. And then my husband says, you see what has happened? Concentrate on yourself. I don't want to hear any word of children in this house. Let's find something to do. Find a business that you can do. Forget about children. That's when we st I started doing ministry. I started serving in the house of God. I became an usher. In that process, I didn't know I had conceived. Because the hospital said, whenever you conceive, you should have total bed rest. Don't do anything. But this time around, I didn't know I was pregnant. I was carrying, there were heavy duties, carrying them to the altar. And there was overflow of power. Whenever apostle says, ushers, take position. It was massive. It was like rain that time. So you have to carry them. And I was pregnant. I didn't know. In the fourth month, it's when I noticed when I went for a checkup, I said, Let me, I, 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 I don't feel comfort. When I checked, and I was, I, was, I was on family planning by then. I checked. They said that I was pregnant. This time around, my husband said, since it has come, let's go to Apostle. When we went to Apostle, he said, mighty God we serve. That child is a miracle baby. And, hallelujah. And then he's, he put us on, on deliverance session from the time I was pregnant until the due date. But what happened, the devil never left because the devil was to and from. I started draining before the time I was supposed to deliver. When I, when I went to the hospital, they said I need to go to UTH. I need to be referred there. I called Apostle. Apostle says, come, I pray for you. He prayed for me. The draining, the bleeding stops. I went to the hospital. I said, your service, because the challenge I had, I had a, a loose cervix that whenever I hold anything heavy, the, whenever the baby becomes too big, it will just drop. So this time around, when they went to check, they found that the the cervix was closed. No matter how much I was draining. And mind you, at hospital they tried everything. They even did a cervical sacrilege to suture it. But all in all, it was opened before I came here. But this time around, by the prayer of the man of God, my cervix was closed. In the in the. It was, it was in the eighth month I started draining like for three days then they said this draining the baby won't survive so you need to come to UTH when I went to UTH apostle still prayed you will bring that baby back I went there the draining was too much but when they checked the cervix was still closed we had to call apostle again to say daddy you need to help they are saying it is closed. He prayed again for it to be open. When I went there, I never had, as I stand on this order, I never had any, I had never had any pain, labor pains. There was no labor pain. And the time that I was, because apostle says, you'll be only be giving birth like a Hebrew woman. The time that the, the nurse was going to, 
I don't know what she went to check because they said I was not in labor. The moment she went, I think she just took one minute. Then the baby just came out. I delivered on my own. And that was my first child, Israel. When I came and raised him up, Apostle raised him up and said, This child shall never know sickness, and he shall have super intelligence. He shall be ten times better than his peers. Israel. Where is Israel? He shall be ten times better than his peers. Hallelujah. Where is Israel? Israel, can you come forward? He can testify to himself how super intelligent this boy is. He has never been admitted in the hospital or being sick with a serious illness. Amen. Uh, in the year 2021, as I entered my fifth grade, the school recorded that my marks were very uh, above average. So the school decided to make me attempt to write my, my seventh grade. But as for me, I lost hope. I thought that I would fail. I thought that I would disgrace my father. But in my dream, a word came in my mind telling me in the book of Psalms 25 verse 3, the Bible says, Oh my God, oh my God, I trust in you. For I shall not be disgraced, and my enemies shall not rejoice because of my defeat. So the Lord motivated me into believe, to believe me in myself. As I entered my seventh grade, I started beating all the, all the people in that class. All the, I even beat the head boy. So one day we are learning, we are taking a mathematics quiz. We answered the questions. Then our teacher challenged us with two grade nine questions. The people, all the people just became quiet. I just stood up, went to the board, solved the questions, and I got them correct. <laughs> so the teacher taught the others. He said that this boy is supernatural intelligent. If I would take him into grade nine, he would still pass. And in my examination, I got the highest mark. So my mom tried to test me if I would do better in a government school. She took me to Arakan Boys Secondary School. At that time, my space, I started late, I started in February. And then I was behind in notes. Then in my first temp test, I was awarded with two certificates. Uh, there was one day we were given a homework. So I was very tired and just, I just arrived home then just slept and forgot to write my homework. After that, the next day, the teacher was beating those who, who did not write the homework. After it reached on my desk, I just took my book, wrote the answers. I don't know where the answers came from. I just wrote the answers and gave the teacher and got the answers correct. In my second term, I was awarded with books. I got four. I was supposed to get four certificates, but by that time, he, they awarded with four books and pens. Yeah, Daddy, that's the super intelligent you prayed for this boy. Uh, 2010 went on. I said, uh, I joined Vicious Women. I became so active because at this child, I said, God, you have given me one, it's fine. 
I became active in virtuous women, started going out of town, doing the work of God, being in service. Children of God, I want to encourage you that the service that you do in the house of God is not in vain. 2018, I conceived. I was on family planning again. I was doing no more messes. I don't know how God always did it this way, that I have to go for family planning, do no more peace, but still conceive. Hallelujah. This time, it was a girl. I went into mom's office. Mom, I've conceived. She was so happy. She says, a virtuous woman has been added to us. She prayed for me. She declared. She says, go and bring back that testimony. The Lord is with you. And then when... Um, Again, the same thing happened. I started draining. When they checked, all in all, the cervix was closed. The baby could not come out. This time around, they said, I needed to go through, I, I needed to go through, through uh, they started with um, forced labor because the fluid was gone. They started with forced labor. They said, this is very painful. But to my surprise, I never felt any pain. And the forced labor could not be done. They said, what next can we do? You will have to go for Caesar. So I prayed there. We called the apostle. He prayed, but he was not told. I didn't tell him that I was supposed to go for Caesar. Because when they told me I was going for Caesar, it was, I think, around, it was around... 23 hours. I thought it was late. I told my husband. He says, don't even try to sign for Caesar. Because I wanted that child. I just told the, the doctors to say my husband has accepted. That's how I was put. I was, even, they, I was even dressed with a gown. They put all those things ready for Caesar. Midnight, at midnight, I started praying with apostle. Children of God, don't underrate uh, that midnight prayers with apostle in that word i prayed with my gown on for caesar i prayed i prayed with apostle from nowhere i slept only woke up around zero three and zero three i was assigned with two nurses from nowhere the other one went to check because it was, it was time ready for me to go for caesar to the theater the other one went to check to the theater the other one had gone to check for another patient who was in the emergency. That moment, I just got water, took the water, and then just tried to sit up. From there, I just heard the baby cry. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Caesar could not happen. At the right, at the exact time I was supposed to go for Caesar, the baby was delivered without pain. And Shekinah was born. Amen. 